वैराग्य विद्या निज भक्ति योगा शिक्षार्थ में पुरुष पुराना श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य शरीर धारी कृपा बुद्धियत महम प्रपद्य ಮುಖಂಕರೋತಿಚಾಲಂಪಂಗುಂಗೇತೆ Warm welcome to the study of Srimad Bhagavad Gita. So we continue our journey. <clears throat> See, there are many forces, many energies and forces which attract us. This is undeniable, isn't it? And naturally we get our, we get drawn into something or someone. Naturally. It doesn't matter if one is a taste or atheist. Krishna consciousness, the principles, they are so broad and all, everyone is covered within easily. So there are naturally forces, energies, which uh, attract us, in a way, lure, seduce, attract us and all. We get uh, trapped or carried away, good or bad, whichever, both sides. Now, so if we study some of these forces, they can broadly be said to be something as our samskaras. Sanskrit samskaras, which is impressions previously from previous lives, actually accumulated impressions from previous lives stored in our subconscious mind. Accumulated impressions. So, what is accumulated from my previous life stored in my subconscious mind takes me in this life. Uh, I feel drawn to those impressions again, to those sort of friends, friends, interest, food, diet, eat, sleeping, uh, play, job, all those things from the uh, from my subconscious mind, accumulated impressions from past lives, very strong. Something called as samskars, and it is these accumulated impressions from past lives, samskars. They form my habit, Swabhava, in Sanskrit called as Swabhava. They form my habit as well, in a way, my personality. Yeah? And uh, because I, because out of my samskars, I, I can easily do that activity over and over again. I naturally feel a drawing to it, and I naturally then can manage myself to doing it repeating it wanting to repeat it myself so samskar swabhav yeah. swabhav they influence my consciousness level they influence my well-being in generally speaking samskars influence my well-being then samskar swabhav some in sanskrit stan place the place where i live influences my well-being a lot imagine someone living in central london in core central london then the mood central london friday night saturday night sunday and all uh, and imagine someone living in a countryside so the place where we are in we naturally get influenced now imagine if we are walking in city center i may not be in much rush but if i'm in a busy street i get the place influences my consciousness level, my well-being. I act accordingly. I get influenced and act accordingly. So place also has a big big role in my well-being, overall development. Then some time. The time also, morning time, evening time, day time. Time also, time, summer time. Uh, and my bodily time as well. What bodily age am I? Time is a huge factor which influences uh, what bodily, then someone in a man's body, someone's in a woman's body, and the time zone and the bodily age. Wow, so time influences, definitely influences our well-being, consciousness, our thought process, everything, our actions, huh? personality. 
तो संस्कार स्वभाव स्थान प्लेस टाइम देन सर्कमस्टेंसेस स्थिति सर्कमस्टेंसेस इन्फ्लुएंस आवर वेल बींग कॉन्शियसनेस and circumstances certain circumstances whatever is there stored in my conscious mind at that moment it comes to the surface so circumstances also tremendously influence and all these influence what my service attitude it doesn't matter devotee or non devotee we all are serving right even if someone has not found krishna consciousness his interest in krishna consciousness the person would still be serving is his mind ego senses family whatever but we all are serving so all these factors they heavily influence our well being impacting our uh, influence our service attitude impacting our well being and everything now there is one more factor one more factor which which can beat all of these factors and that factor also influences our well being if anyone likes can make a guess there is one more factor which influences my well being my thought process my personality my consciousness level my way of acting and that is the strongest i would say easily and that has the potency the capacity the potential to beat the effect of samskaras some conscious impressions in subconscious mind to beat the effect of my habits to beat the effect of time to beat the effect of space or place to beat the effect of circumstances apologies i always tend to put Uh, on the spot and ask this and it's not that i prepare in advance or make notes and all just what comes to my mind the so the ultimate factor again the ultimate factor is sang uh, sanskrit word say sang uh, means association company uh, the you know there are many uh, good motivational speakers right they, and it's like research as well tell me your five of your friends and i will tell you who you are what your personality is you know the company you keep is what you become the company we keep is what we become so company is very very strong very influential and it has the capacity to overpower the effect of samskaras the overpower the effect of habits overpower the effect of time overpower the effect of place overpower the effect of circumstances examples hundreds plenty spiritual life non spiritual life as well non spiritual life say someone wants to become an accountant you have studied but in company and then you join a and as a organization and work under some manager some person and you learn accountancy likewise you want to become a doctor lawyer engineer actually so you join them and work under them so get trained that way company plays a huge pivotal critical role prabhupad someone in his 70s came to the west huh initially prabhupada's accent for the local people for western bodies westerners western bodies was quite difficult to understand and for prabhupada as well to understand their accent even now it is seen generally we don't tend to spend much time with a 70 year old man or woman uh, we don't spend much time but prabhupada carried such a smile such an energy such an aura so much love that youth youngsters were waiting to spend time with with him we wanting to spend as much time as they can with prabhupad huh? so prabhupad when he entered people's lives people's samskaras got changed their habits got transformed samskaras got transformed the place could be living in where 26 bauri um 
Boston, a bit run down place, a bit rough places uh, and in Western world. But the place did not have much of an influence on, over their consciousness, over their well-being, over their acting. Then the time, winter time, summer time and all different time did not have much of an effect. The situation, circumstances, no. It is the company of saintly people that uh, gave them tremendous energy, tremendous faith to dovetail their life. Human life is meant to be mold, to be dovetailed. That provided immense strength, faith. And now we see the hard labor, the blood and sweat of devotees that we are able to practice Krishna consciousness and we have to continue the same legacy. We have to continue the same legacy. It is an uh, unfinished task and it can never go finished. There's lots to be done in the service of Mahaprabhu. So thing is, it is the company, the association, the friendship, what we keep that determines a lot for us in life. And this is where here Arjuna in the right company of Krishna and he's finding from hopelessness, a situation of complete hopelessness to endless hope. A situation of complete uh, moral, mental breakdown to a complete moral, mental breakthrough. Such a uh, transformation, such a tremendous like um, transition, transformation company. And the same, it is the same, very same exact dialogue what Arjuna heard, we are also hearing. The exact same dialogue, the exact same message. Nothing adulterated, nothing diluted. Bhagavad Gita as it is. So if I just try to imbibe myself in Arjuna's shoes, try to follow Arjuna, try to um, appreciate Arjuna's confusion, Arjuna's big precarious situation and Arjuna's effort and Arjuna's uh, faith. Huh? If I can appreciate that, Krishna will bless us tremendously for us to assimilate, penetrate, to uh, take this message as it is wholeheartedly. And then life will change beyond imagination for us. Can Anyone practicing Krishna consciousness could have never deciphered, could have never calculated God that, wow, this is how tremendously my life will change. Could have anyone thought, oh, I would be wearing dhoti, kurta, tila, kanti, mala, sari, eh? or going out distributing books, Harinam and whatnot, externally, internally, this transformation. So it is the company is the most critical thing. Company. With company, I may not have the right desire, but the desire will come about. I may not have the right power, strength to work that will come about. Sincerity, discipline, conviction, faith would come about. A tremendous sloka in Srimad Bhagavatam 11.26.26 Tato dusangam utsirche Satsu sajjeta buddhiman Santa evasya chindanti mano vyasangam uktibhi So, my apologies. Respecting time, we may not uh, be able to discuss that Bhagavatam sloka. Uh, uh, I personally like that shloka very much, Srimad Bhagavatam 11, 26, 26. Tato This is the message that give up, give up therefore, giving up utsirja, giving up all bad temporary materialistic association. Satsu sajjeta buddhiman. Krishna expects us to be buddhiman, intelligent. Mahaprabhu expects me to be intelligent. Uh, the world also wants me to be intelligent. Everyone wants, and no one wants to be like a fool in that sense. But what intelligence? Spiritually, Krishna consciously intelligent. Satsu sajjita buddhiman. 
संत एवस्य चिंदन्ति सो दिस इज द थिंग संत सेंटली पर्सन चिंदन्ति कैन कट कट ऑफ कट संत एवस्य चिंदन्ति मनोव्यासंगम उक्ति भी ऑल द ट्रिब्युलेशंस दैट आई एम कैरिंग इन माय माइंड मनोव्यासंगम व्यसन एज इन एडिक्शन ऑल द एडिक्शंस व्हिच आई हैव इन माय माइंड थ्रू देयर पावरफुल स्पीच उक्ति भी थ्रू देयर uh words powerful pure powerful words saintly person has the power in his speech to cut off my material attachments so it is advised for every anyone who considers himself to be wise intelligent sane or wants to become wise intelligent sane he should associate with saintly person this should be our only prayer to krishna to god to almighty that kindly give me the association of your devotees kindly bring me in contact with those personalities who know you who are in love and touch with you by associating with them through their viryavati krishna katha through their powerful krishna katha whatever excessive unexcessive material attachments i am harboring keeping in my mind the addictions they will all get cut off from the roots so such is the power of speech krishna speaking this power of transcendental sound vibration exactly the same message and with this prayer mood aspiration attitude we pray that we can uh, listen this take on imbibe this message within ourselves so seeking the blessings of guru and gorang we continue our study of shrimad bhagavad gita chapter 11 text 43 onwards and uh, as always if you have any questions or comments cut me out any time and uh, kindly speak or any uh, clarifications or anything to add or please come forward so we continue chapter 11 text 43 pitasi lokasya characharasya tvamasya pujyascha gurur gariyan na tvat samosti abhyadeka kutonyo lokatre api pratima prabhav lucy kindly share translation and purport and would you be or i will ask anuja to read this huh? if she can read text 43 we all keep company physical company in the sense company of people and otherwise we are keep, keeping the company of, of our mind right who is not associating with his mind and excessive attachments we are carrying in mind only okay anuja read text 43 translation and purport you are the father of this complete cosmic manifestation of the moving and the non moving you are its worshipable chief the supreme spiritual master no one is greater than you nor can anyone be one without you how then could there be anyone greater than you within the three worlds o lord of immeasurable power purport the supreme personality of god and krishna is krishna is worshipable as a father is worshipable for his son he is a spiritual master because his he because he originally gave the vedic instructions to brahma and presently he is also instructing bhagavad gita to arjuna therefore he is the original spiritual master and any bona fide spiritual master at the present moment must be descendant 
in the line of disciple succession stemming from krishna <clears throat> without being a representative of krishna one cannot become a teacher or spiritual master of transcendental subject matter okay i'm thinking lucy and anuja would you be okay to read paragraph by paragraph this purport sure the lord is being paid a peace in all respects he is of immeasurable greatness no one can be greater than the supreme personality of godhead krishna because no one is equal to or higher than krishna within any manifestation spiritual or material everyone is below him no one can excel him this is stated in the shweta shvatara upanishad 6.8 natas hmm. natasya karyam karanam cha vidyate natat samas chadab chadadya bikas cha drishyate The supreme lord Krishna has senses and a body like the ordinary man but for him there is no difference between his senses his body his mind and himself foolish this persons is stated in mahabharata as well another place also so for krishna being absolute na this is what absolute means that there is no separation in the sense for krishna his body his uh, speech his mind his desire his thought his senses there is no separation okay continue foolish persons who do not perfectly know him say that krishna is different from his soul mind heart and everything else krishna is absolute therefore his activities and potencies are supreme it is also stated that although he does not have senses like ours he can perform all sensory activities therefore his senses are neither imperfect nor limited no one can be greater than him no one can be equal to him and everyone is lower than him the knowledge strength and activities of the supreme personality are all transcendental as stated in bhagavad gita 4.9 janma karma cha me divyam evam yuveti tatvata tyaktva deham punar janma neti mameti so arjuna Whoever knows Krishna's transcendental body activities and perfection after quitting his body returns to him and doesn't come back again to this miserable world therefore one should know that Krishna's activities are different from others the best policy is to follow the principles of Krishna that will make one perfect it is also stated that there is no one who is master of Krishna everyone is his servant the chitanya charitamrita adi 5.142 confirms ekade ishwar krishna arashtava pratya only krishna is god and everyone else is his servant everyone is complying with his order there is no one who can deny his order everyone is acting according to his direction being under his super intendence as stated in the brahma samhita he is the cause of all causes no serious translation you are the father of this complete cosmic manifestation of the moving and the unmoving the non-moving you are its worshipable worshipable chief the supreme spiritual master no one is greater than you nor can anyone be one with you how then could there be anyone greater than you within 
the three worlds, O Lord of immeasurable power. We all, George Harrison writes, I believe, in the yeah, in the preface of a uh, uh, Krishna book, that knowingly, unknowingly, willingly, unwillingly, uh, we, in whichever sense, we all are searching for Krishna only. Uh, we all are wanting to see the ultimate cause, the ultimate thing. So we all are. So and it is this company again. See, the company helps us. Uh, this saintly person. What is the job of a saintly person? The job of a saintly person is to first of all say warn the society. Savdana to warn, caution the society, not in any degrading or uh, dehumanizing or patronizing way. Nothing, even oh, this purport when purport says, "No, Krishna is the God and rest all the servant." It is not like in a patronizing way. What does patronizing mean, Lucy? To put someone patronizing. down. Patronizing. Yeah. Patronizing is to think that you're better than someone else and you talk down yes. to them. Yes, yes. So it is not in a patronizing way that uh, Purport is saying or Chaitanya Chaitanya Medha or literature that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God and Ekala Ishwara Krishna are Sabritya and everyone is serving him. Huh? So it's not like you are low. The day I realize that I'm a part of Krishna's existence, I belong to Krishna, I find my highest uh, appraisal. You know, this is my highest appraisal to be recognized as a Krishna, as Krishna's lover, as a pure devotee of Krishna. Uh, so, a saintly person cautions us, but not in an egoistic, patron, patronizing way. Patronizing, if there is patronizing anywhere, then it, it is out of ego, out of some grudge. So, but saintly people do not do, they are very compassionate. So very bestowing compassion, they uh, caution us. And this is what the four regulatory principles are, cautioning us from falling into the traps of Maya. But that is not all in all. Uh, if, if I just caution someone, oh, don't do this, don't do that, don't do that, the person will got, get crazy. Will say, oh, you are just a book of don't do, don't do, don't do. Then they provide solutions. Saintly people provide solution as well. That do this, engage like this. Uh, this is what life is meant for. Can I ask one question? Is life meant for sense enjoyment or enlightenment? Enlightenment. Uh, is life meant for sense enjoyment or enlightenment? Life is meant for growing only, no? for enlightenment only. And when we are enlightened, that then sense enjoyment is pure. So life is meant for a enlightened sense enjoyment, you know, pure enlightened sense enjoyment. Currently, the sense enjoyment which we are doing is on a very material, mundane platform. There is some sort of enjoyment in it, surely, but it is so fickle. Again, what does fickle mean? Flickering, is it? Changing, not strong enough, not sticking, not sustaining. Because, yeah, so, like flaky, flaky behavior. So currently the material sense enjoyment which we relish also, we get as well. But it is because it is based on matter. Because it's Aadhaar, its basis is matter, it is fickle. It, it cannot hold its ground for long. It cannot. And this is why we struggle, we get frustrated, because I'm so desperately looking for Krishna, but in matter. And then time to time I get frustrated. So saintly people tell us, look, 
you want sense gratification sure we all want we should be having sense but purify your senses first we should purify our senses rishi kena rishi kensha sevanam bhakti ruchate bhakti ruttamam so by engaging our senses in the service of krishna the master of the senses Rishikesha, one name of Krishna is Rishikesha, one is the master of the senses. So by engaging our senses in the service of Krishna, one who is the master of the senses, our senses find enlightenment, enjoyment, everything in a purified state. So saintly people do this, that caution us and also provide us this sensible encouragement. Uh, so saintly people tell us what the problem is, the cause of the problem, proper diagnosis, proper solution, and not just leave it there. They become a source of inspiration as well. Hmm? They take the lead, help us follow them, and they all the way hold our hands. All the way take us holding our hand to Krishna. So we all are searching for Krishna, we all of us. It is just when we come across devotees, the penny drops. Mm -hmm. And Krishna is the cause of all causes. And there's no duality, there's no uh, split in Krishna. He's, for him, the soul and the body is one and the same. For me, soul is different, material body is different. But this is not for Krishna. So, uh, this is why in quality we and Krishna and us we all are same because we are Krishna's but because we are living in misidentification crisis thing is uh, some saintly person said what we want to enjoy the kingdom of God but without God did you hear of this Lucy before Um, I don't think so. We want to enjoy the kingdom of God, but without God. This is the problem. No? We we want to, honestly, we, we should check ourselves. I want to act as little Krishna. Little or even big Krishna, maybe. As in, I want to be really enjoying. I want to be really controlling. I want to be really good. Show good and all. Hmm? Okay, we acknowledge we have these tendencies and uh, at least we are realist, as in we are not shying away from them, running away from them, and we are a work in progress, right? devotee work in progress. So we are not become pure yet, but we are in the process of becoming pure. Great thing is that we have adopted the process. Yeah, that's the great thing. So, uh, this is where saintly persons, they give us all-round protection. Okay, any thoughts, questions, or comments, please? All right, let us see next then. Uh, 44. Tasmat pranamya pranidhaya kayam prasadaye tvam aham isamidyam Piteva putrasya sakheva sakhyo priya priya rahasi deva sodham. So, text 44. Uh, Lucy, would you be okay to read translation and purport, please? You are the Supreme Lord to be worshipped at every living, to be worshipped by every living being. Thus I fall down to offer you my respectful obeisances and ask for your mercy. As a father tolerates the impudence of his son, a friend, a friend, the impertinence of a friend or a husband, the familiarity of his wife. 
Please tolerate the wrongs I may have done you. Krishna's devotees relate to Krishna in various relationships. One might treat Krishna as a son, or one might treat Krishna as a husband, as a friend, or as a master. Krishna and Arjuna are related in friendship. As the father tolerates, or the husband or a master tolerates, so Krishna tolerates. You are the Supreme Lord to be worshipped by every living being. Thus, I fall down to offer you my respectful obeisances and ask for your mercy. As a father tolerates the impudence of his son, a friend the impertinence of a friend, or a husband the familiarity of his wife, please tolerate the wrongs I may have done you. <laughs> Hearing this, Krishna would be like smiling. Uh, see, see, Arjuna, why here he's like, um, I fall down to offer you my respectable obeisances and asking for mercy, pleading forgiveness. Huh? Please forgive me and all. Uh, the impudence and the uh, impertinence of a friend. Uh, so, like, he's taking all these uh, wrong, wrongdoings. And wrongdoings, what? That Krishna, I ate with you, I sang with you, I danced with you, I played with you, I sported with you, I jested with you, I made fun of you also, I called you by uh, sort of pet names, Sushi Karantai, Mayapur, Sashi Kinja. So, Arjuna is now, because the awe and reverence is so strong, like he's so getting overwhelmed by the awe and reverence, what Krishna has showed the universal form, that he's taking them as a mistake, uh, out of his like his friendship and attachment and familiarity with Krishna. He's saying, oh, I've been too familiar. Quite natural, isn't it? Like, if I, I'm familiar, if I'm in friends with, with a person, and later on I realize, oh my God, he is actually the CEO of a big, big company. He's a big, big politician. He's a big, big this. Then I would be like, oh, sorry, I didn't know you were you. And I joked with you, I told you. So such is the thing Arjuna is going through. And <laughs> Krishna would be smiling. Nah? Krishna like, oh, because Krishna, for Krishna, Arjuna is his like, best friend, nah? eternal associate. And and this is what Krishna wants us. Krishna wants us to be his friend. Krishna wants us to be his lover. The servant thing in material world brings a negative connotation. In material world, generally servant means I am low. I am being used or uh, I am dependent on that, that sort of things and all. And yeah, in spiritual sense as well, we all are dependent on Krishna. But it's not like a hierarchy in that sense that I am low and that doesn't uh, it's not like that and certainly it's not like exploitation no rather it is one's highest fortune one would realize that wow life is meant to serve krishna no? how beautiful if i can become a servant of krishna and serve means to bring joy to krishna so here arjuna is fine feeling a bit uh, worried that because of familiarity, I might have uh, breached uh, a relationship with you. Uh, imagine such a transition, like being pals, being mates, being friends, and all of a sudden, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, so this Arjuna is experiencing. Any thoughts, questions, or comments? In love, familiarity is never a problem. See, this familiarity is a very funny little thing or beautiful thing. Uh, familiarity in societal things, many things are quite interesting. Familiarity is one of that. Um, in uh, When we are in love, na, then familiarity is never a problem. When we are in love, in genuine love, So, otherwise, too much familiarity, what? Okay, 
the person's true face is exposed or I've been too familiar with you and ultimately I feel hurt. I put so much expectation with you and now I feel hurt and that sort of thing. But one who is, one can never be too familiar with Krishna. And how much one familiar becomes, one would never find himself distorted, hurt, lost. Rather, he would find himself more rejuvenated, more in strength, more of everything. So in Krishna consciousness, familiarity is very good. <laughs> you want to be familiar with Krishna. Over familiarity, we can never be over familiar with Krishna. But in societal, we need to check how much distance and that thing to maintain. Familiarity can be a problem in in our material dealings. Okay, let us read next forty five. Adrishta Purvam Rishito Smi Drishtva Bhayenacha Pravyatitam Manome Tad Eva Me Darshaya Deva Rupam Prasida Devas Jagan Nivasan Okay, maybe I can read this. After seeing this universal form, which I have never seen before. I am gladdened. But at the same time, my mind is disturbed with fear. <laughs> Therefore, please bestow your grace upon me and reveal again your form as the personality of God and O Lord of Lords, O abode of the universe. See, this is what Arjuna is asking. That fine, I've seen the volcano. I've seen the big fire, the massive big fire. And I am gladdened but at the same time, my mind is disturbed with fear. My mind is agitated. My mind is uh, very disturbed. So please kindly come to your candlelight form. I love that. Uh, please bestow your grace upon me and reveal again your form as the personality of God. O oh, Lord of Lords, O oh, abode of the universe, purport. Arjuna is always in confidence with Krishna because he's a very dear friend. And as a dear friend is gladdened by his friend's opulence, Arjuna is very joyful to see that his friend Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead and can show such a wonderful universal form. But at the same time, after seeing that universal form, he is afraid that he has committed so many offenses to Krishna out of his unallo unalloyed friendship. Thus his mind is disturbed out of fear, although he had no reason to fear. Arjuna therefore is asking Krishna to show his Narayan form, because he can assume any form. The, this universal form is material and temporary, as the material world is temporary. This universal form is material and temporary, as the material world is temporary. But in the Vaikuntha planets, he has his transcendental form with four hands as Narayan. Chatur Bhujrup Narayan. There are innumerable planets in the spiritual sky. And each of and in each of them, Krishna is presented by his plenary manifestations of different names. So there are innumerable planets in the spiritual sky, and there are innumerable planets in the material sky as well. Uh, material universe innumerable and there and uh, Krishna is the supreme controller in each of the spiritual sky Krishna is the presiding deity in each of them Krishna is present by his multi plenary manifestations of different names according to his different moods according to his different pastimes and relish of mellows so much of joy in Krishna consciousness Thus, Arjuna desired to see one of the forms manifest in the Vaikuntha planets. Of course, in each Vaikuntha planet, the form of Narayan is four-handed. But the four hands hold different arrangements of symbols. The conch shell, mace, lotus, and disc. According to the different hands, these four things are held in. The Narayanas are variously named. So... 
even if again i say even if someone takes the vedic literatures to be fancy enough uh, to be uh, fic fiction hmm? such a good fiction <laughs> such a sweet amazing fiction all of these forms are one with krishna therefore arjuna request to see his four handed feature huh? so he's coming actually he's coming to the candle he will come to the candle like form from the universal form kindly show me your four handed form after seeing this universal form which i have never seen before i am glad and but at the same time my mind is disturbed with fear therefore please bestow your grace upon me and again and reveal again your form as the personality of godhead o lord of lords o abode of the universe any thoughts questions or comment i hope my voice is uh, fairly audible to you your voice is loud and clear yeah okay thank you yeah so arjuna like um, he was overwhelmed with fear seeing that universal form never saw before and and um, he took all those jokes we had friendship and share and love which we had with krishna he took them as offenses uh, so now is like uh, asking krishna for grace and saying okay kindly take away this form of yours uh, i've got the uh, more than enough what i wanted to see and please show me your narayan form kindly so um, in brahma samhita uh, the shloka is in brahma samhita like lord brahma's uh, samhita is compilation collection right so lord brahma's meditation and experiences wherein he notes down durga devi the uh, presiding deity of this material world lord brahma speaks about himself lord shiva his place and then uh, nana avatar akarod bhuvaneshu kintu uh, different different incarnations and um, different spiritual planets in each there are innumerable spiritual planets in each spiritual planet krishna is residing the presiding deity with a different form and a different mood and having passed times with his innumerable devotees since eternity and the topmost of all the vaikuntha planets is golok vrindavan where krishna resides in his sham sundar form and radha krishna they have their loving pastimes there is no dearth of knowledge in vedic literature of this mundane world and yeah spiritual world uh, we need to have that purity we need to have that even purity is required to understand workings of this material world as well but spiritual world we need that exp special extra mercy and purity uh, so there are two things na desire and deserve uh, desire will awaken when we come across devotees desire will awaken should awaken then deserve will we will also be deserving when we again practice then we become qualified as well and we have to become qualified so it is not uh, first deserve we have to be deserving then the desire will be fulfilled this is why uh, practicing krishna consciousness taking voluntarily some austerities and making some lifestyle changes for one's own personal benefit real benefit so i'm hoping we have maybe 10 15 minutes more to read one or two more kiritinam gadinam chakrastam ichami tvam drashtam aham tatheva teneva rupena chaturbhujena sahasra baho bhava vishva murte uh, lucy would you be okay to read translation properly please 46 number
O oh, universal form, O oh, thousand armed Lord, I wish to see you in your four armed form, with helmeted head and with club, wheel, conch, and lotus flower in your hands. I long to see you in that form. In the Brahma Samhita 5.39, it is stated Ramadi Mo Tishu Kala Niyamana Tishtan. The Lord is eternally situated in hundreds and thousands of forms, and the main forms are those like Rama, Nursima, Narayana, etc. There are innumerable forms, but Arjuna knew that Krishna is the original personality of Godhead. Assuming his temporary universal form, he is now asking to see the form of Narayana, a spiritual form. This verse establishes, without any doubt, the statement of the Srimad Bhagavatam that Krishna is the original personality of Godhead and all of the features originate from him. He is not different from his plenary expansions, and he is God in any of his innumerable forms. In all of these forms, he is fresh like a young man. That is the constant feature of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. One who knows Krishna becomes free at once from all contamination of the material world. O oh, universal form, O oh, thousand armed lord, I wish to see you in your four armed form with helmeted head and with club, wheel, conch, and lotus flower in your hands. I long to see you in that form. Hari Bol. Very theoretic, see, Bhagavad Gita, just by reading. Yeah in itself very therapeutic so beautiful and Prabhupada's purpose amazing that uh, uh, Krishna has innumerable forms huh? and in all of these forms like um, uh, Krishna is the original personality of God uh, and all other features originate from him uh, in Bhagavatam we see na ete chamsa kalapumsa Krishna's to Bhagwan Swayam. Uh, it's see, uh, Sukhdev Goswami, Srila Vyasdev, they're saying, what? Krishna's to Bhagwan Swayam. Uh, in Srimad Bhagavatam 1328, we see, Ete Chamsa Kalapumsa, Krishna's to Bhagwan Swayam, Indrari Vyakulam Lokam, Ridayanti Yuge Yuge. So, Krishna is the source of all incarnations, he's the source of Lord Rams, Lord Vara, Lord Vaman, Lord Narayan, Lord. Uh, Narsimha, and uh, of course the source of us as well. No? We are also we are also expansions of Krishna. So yeah, and uh, Krishna resides in his uh, Golok Rindavan in his personal original form, having pastimes with his uh, loving pure devotees all the way throughout so this is krishna consciousness and uh, the rama di murti sukalani menatistana brahma samita we see so krishna consciousness is actually based on scriptures study of scriptures uh, there has to be some some basis na? some foundation some other na? like in general workings is it not people say Oh, where is it written? Huh? Where is it written? Is it a law or what? Like um, in India and everywhere, I suppose. In India, like uh, people say, when you when I ask someone, say, I may ask someone, uh, no, you should not do this or do this or this is the thing. People may come about saying, that is it written somewhere? If so, can you prove it? Where is it written? Can you show it to me? So, Baba, it is written, na, Brahma Samhita, Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam, uh, uh, Puranas. So, and, and reading the scriptures, na, scriptures, they are not man-made. They are not human-made. They are a Purusha. Uh, 
they are not like originated or written by a human being. No. Srila uh, Vyasdev wrote it, who is a literary incarnation of Krishna. They do not carry any human defects. Now, Prabhupada gave us this literature and translation. There could be some grammatical mistake, some perhaps some spelling mistake. But in principles, in devotional, spiritual principles, there is no mistake. There is no mistake. Prabhupada being a transcendental personality, he gave us these literatures, he introduced us to these literatures. Uh, and it's not like that Prabhupada didn't make mistake, uh, but his mistakes were not like um, of a, on the spiritual caliber or like that. No, that has to be seen. So in here, Arjuna is uh, longing to see, um, asking Krishna to show him his four-handed uh, Narayan form. Uh, so the next verse maybe i will let's um, okay so let's just read one more the next verse for today text 47 well let us uh, leave it there what krishna says text 47 krishna speaks so let us read a bit of that and then uh, we'll continue from 48 later on in our next uh, session. Shri Bhagavan Vacha Maya Prasanne Natavarjune Dham Rupam Param Darshitam Atma Yoga Tejo Mayam Vishwa Manantam Adhyam Yan Metvad Anyena Nadrishta Purvam So I can read translation and I will ask Lucy to read purport. The Supreme Personality of God had said, My dear Arjuna, happily have I shown you by my internal potency this supreme universal form within the within the material world. No one before you has ever seen this primal form, unlimited and full of clearing effulgence. Arjun wanted to see the universal form of the Supreme Lord. So Lord Krishna, out of his mercy upon his devotee Arjuna, showed his universal form full of effulgence and opulence. This form was glaring like the sun and its many faces were rapidly changing. Krishna showed this form just to satisfy the desire of his friend Arjuna. This form was manifested by Krishna through his internal potency, which is inconceivable <clears throat> by human speculation. No one had seen this universal form of the Lord Arjuna before Arjuna, but because the form was shown to Arjuna, other devotees in the heavenly planets and in other planets in outer space could also see it. They had not seen it before, but because of Arjuna, they were also able to see it. In other words, all the disciplic devotees of the Lord could see the universal form from which was form which was shown to Arjuna by the mercy of Krishna. Someone has commented that this form was shown to Duryodhana. Also, when Krishna went to Duryodhana to negotiate for peace, unfortunately, Duryodhana did not accept the peace offer. But at the time, Krishna manifested some of his universal forms. But those forms are different from this one shown to Arjuna. It is clearly said that no one had ever seen this form before. The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, My dear Arjuna, happily have I shown you by my internal potency, the supreme universal form within the material world. No one before you has ever seen this primal form, unlimited and full of glaring effulgence. Sri Krishna wants 
some of the prim one primary reason like is to fulfill the joy of his devotees and devotees also full uh, full um, enhance the joy of his devotees fulfills the desire of his pure devotees and pure devotees also serve for for that intent to fulfill the desire of krishna and to enhance the joy of krishna it's not like krishna is lacking in joy but one thing is sure i share a unique relationship with him and now that i know i'm krishna's i would like to um, enhance krishna's joy and by enhancing krishna's joy well whatever i can enhance i get multifold in return i get multifold in return so krishna is saying hmm, arjuna because you desired so by my internal potency by my own potency internal my personal potency say i'm uh, showing this universal form to you supreme universal form no one had seen this before so until and unless we rope in a devotee in our life now see via arjuna uh, the other soldiers and all in the battlefield are able to see via arjuna we are also able to see i'm sure when we read this chapter we all get into a visualization mode do we not we we all get into visualization mode visualizing what that scene would be like in a battlefield massive battlefield krishna and arjuna are standing on a chariot and krishna showing this universal form to arjuna right from the chariot scene huh? wow uh, we all go in visualizing that so why arjuna by his mercy we are able to partake participate in this supreme dialogue and through arjuna the demigods are also benefiting uh, this this form of uh, krishna although material and temporary but such an overwhelming form uh, such a magical if the word can be used as magical wow because magic is everyone gets attracted even though we know it's magic but yeah still i would like to see one so that sort of this universal form is so like luring in that sense and why arjuna uh, demigods and everyone get to see this so message is like thing is once we rope in a devotee then our desires and we get to uh, further intricacies of sweet experiences in life come about and yes krishna when he went as a peace messenger look uh, this war could have been avoided no krishna went as a peace messenger and to duryodhana the opposite side the prince in the opposite side to uh, uh, convince him tell him that you just give five villages to the pandavas because they are it's their rightful claim as well and if you still you give them five villages they are rulers kings administrators they would rule they would rule piously and i give you the assurance they will never attack you krishna had before making this deal krishna had not discussed this with arjuna or his elder brothers uh, he went there and he proposed this because krishna had faith in the pandavas he had faith in the pandavas that whatever i come back with they will oblige happily and hearing this duryodhan what does he reply the evil minded duryodhan he says well keshava what to speak of five villages i won't give you spare you that much of land what is occupied by the eye of a needle by the thread of a uh, tip of a needle now the tip of a needle how much space can it occupy but he is not willing to budge even that much space and what does he say he tells his soldiers soldiers capture this krishna huh? capture this coward boy and krishna <laughs> smilingly <laughs> jokingly like it's yeah, it's like um, um mockery sort of krishna mockingly shows his universal form to some degree but yet duryodhan just cannot cannot uh, take krishna cannot put faith in krishna cannot control himself why because he is so obsessed with himself so this is the thing one who is so obsessed with oneself with one's mind with one's attachments with one's own ignorance with one's own thinking even if krishna is present in front of him he won't be able to see him and it is devotees which when come devotional practice and 
uh, the Bhagavad Gita, the reading, hearing, chanting, then we transform ourselves from self-obsession to Krishna obsession. Otherwise, like Duryodhana and others, Krishna was present, but yet they could not see him. So trapped by Maya because of their own uh, obsession and own uh, wanting to enjoy, decry Krishna, offend Krishna in that sense. So much full of himself, oneself. No, so much full of oneself. So uh, if we are so full of oneself, we won't be able to really relish and enjoy life. And if we are full of Krishna, Krishna's mercy, then we will really relish and enjoy life to the beyond our estimation. So with this um, prayer again, uh, with this aspiration, maybe we bring our study to a rest here. It's not like we can never bring Bhagavad Gita study or the study of Krishna consciousness to an end. It's endless. How can we bring it to an end? It's limitless, endless. But yes, because we are conditioned and we have some obligations and things, so uh, we have to we bring it to a rest here. But rest is just okay. Physically, we are bringing it to a rest here. But in our consciousness, we should always be on. Krishna consciousness in our consciousness should always be on. So with this prayer, mood, again, inspiration, and thank you very much for your participation and encouragement. Uh, I'm guessing we do not have any um, questions or comments, so we put it to rest here. Hare Krishna. We'll continue later from text 48 and yeah, we'll see further on what all forms Krishna shows to Arjuna and then ultimately in this chapter, text 54 and 55, what transcendental message Krishna tells to Arjuna. Thank you very much for your kindness. Hare Krishna.